quadratic equations. What are they? How do you know if it is a quadratic equation? And most importantly, how do you solve a quadratic equation? Welcome to another video in the equations playlist. Remember to check out the other equation videos linked below. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to get more lessons like this and to join my live lessons. So quadratic equations. All of the equations that you see on the screen are quadratic equations. Now, how do you recognize a quadratic equation? When you see an x squared, a squared variable, remember in most equations we deal with x, but it might not be x, so a squared variable, or we can distribute, remember distribution involves multiplication, if we can do that in order to get an x squared, it is a quadratic equation. So you can see here I've got an x squared, so it's quadratic, same thing here and here, and in these equations down here, if I had to distribute this into the bracket, if I had to distribute the x into the brackets, you would get x squared minus x equals 20. So we can distribute to get an x squared, therefore it's a quadratic equation. Same thing over here, if I distribute, if I multiply, you will end up getting an x squared. So that's how we identify if it is a quadratic equation. Now this is a type of equation that I know grade 10s and even grade 11s and grade 12s struggle with. What do you do when you have a quadratic equation? The first thing that I want to pop into your brain as soon as you see that it is a quadratic equation is get the equation into standard form. That is the most important first step. Here are my steps. I know I haven't listed that get into standard form as my first step, but my first step is just double check if it's quadratic. So like I said, if you see an x squared or you can multiply to get an x squared, then it is. Then the most important step get into standard form. Now, what does standard form mean? It means that you must make it equal to zero and you must have descending powers of x. I'll explain what this one means in a second. So for example, if you see something like, let's take this one for example, you can see that it is quadratic because we've got a squared term. We need to get it into standard form, make it equal to zero. So I'm going to take the 8x over. I'm going to do the inverse operation of plus 8x, which is minusing. 8x. Remember, what you do on the one side, so I've subtracted 8x on the one side, you must do on the other side. What's 8x minus 8x? Zero. You've gotten rid of the 8x in simple terms. So that is standard form, make it equal to zero. And descending powers of x, that just means that when you put the terms in order on the one side of the equation, the x with the biggest exponent goes first, so x squared, and then x to the power of one. So for example, this would be descending powers of x. x cubed plus x squared plus x plus two, for example. This has got the biggest exponent, then this one, then this one, and this one has no x, or technically x to the power of zero if you want to be technical. Okay, so get it into standard form. And then we have step three, four, and five, which I'll get to when I jump into the examples that you see on the screen. So these examples will be covered in this playlist. Let's do some. First example x squared equals 16. Now, I know that you may be used to seeing this example, maybe you've done it in grade eight definitely could have asked you this in grade eight, even grade nine. And I know what my grade tens often say to me, ma'am, I know how to solve for this. And it doesn't involve your special quadratic equation ways. My students say this is x squared. The opposite of square, the inverse operation of squaring is square root. So they say to me, ma'am, you just simply square root both sides like this. And then you square root that side. If you square root a square, you end up with just x. And that's just a rule. If you square root a square, you can think of it as this is cancelling with this. It's actually more technical than this. The rule is you take the inside exponent divided by this thing over here. So this is a invisible two because it's a root. So it is two divided by two, which is x to the power of one. Okay, that's just getting technical. What's really happening mathematically. And if you square root 16, my students say to me, ma'am, the answer is four. But the answer is actually plus minus four. Why? This is where my students start to get stuck. Why is it plus minus four? So if you just say four, you get one out of two. You get half of your marks. The reason why it is actually plus minus is because substitute this back in the place of x. If you put a positive four, use brackets and you square it, that means four times four, which is 16. But if you put a negative four in the place of x, use brackets and on your calculator, use brackets. Negative four squared, what does that mean? Negative four times negative four. What's a negative times a negative? 16. So what this means is that in order for this equation to be true, in order for it to work, x can be a positive four because we'll put it in brackets and we'll square it. It'll give me 16. Or x can be a negative four. We'll put it in brackets, square it, and it'll give me a 16. This is the grade eight. I'm going to call it the grade eight or nine method. 
I want to show you how to do this using my new method. And I would prefer, I think your teachers would too, if you just stuck to this new method to avoid forgetting the plus minus and for actually doing a proper quadratic equation method, which is what we have to use in the following examples coming up. So how would you do this using the quadratic equation method? So we definitely know that it's quadratic. We've got an x squared. So step one is done. Get it into standard form. Now remember what that means. It means making it equal to zero. So we're going to say x squared minus 16 equals zero. The opposite of plus 16 or positive 16 is minus 16. So your teacher or whatever you might be used to saying, I'm taking the 16 over. Remember the mathematically correct way is we're minusing both sides of the equation by 16. That's why it's x squared minus 16 and 16 minus 16 gives me zero. Okay, but either way, it's equal to zero. And descending powers of x, there it is, x squared. And then this one has no x, done. Then the third step is to factorize. So this is where you have to think back about how to factorize. Now, you should remember that we can do highest common factor. That's the most important type. You need to always try that first. Can I take out a highest common factor here? No. Then try difference of two squares, difference between two squares. You need two terms. There's two terms here, a minus in between square numbers, I can square root 16, and even exponents, two is an even number. So here I can do difference of two squares in this particular example. And when you factorize this, you're going to get x plus 4, x minus 4. If you need help with factorizing, I'll link the factorizing playlist below. It's very important that you know how to factorize to do quadratic equations. Then we factorize. We've now got one term on the side of the equation. It's very, very important that you need to end up with one term. So that is why we are factorizing. Then we take each bracket or piece. When I say piece, what I mean is this is like a little piece of the equation and this is another piece. So in this case, it's two brackets. So we take each of those, so x plus 4, we make that piece or that bracket equal to 0. We put an or in the middle, so I call it the or method. You must put or in the middle. Then we take this bracket, x minus 4, we make that equal to 0. So do the or method, take each piece, make it equal to 0, and then solve each little mini equation. So Inverse operations, opposite of plus 4, 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. Inverse operations, opposite of subtracting 4, is adding 4. 0 plus 4 is positive 4. As you can see, we get two solutions. So that is an important thing about quadratic equations. You will get two solutions, two answers. And it makes sense because your exponent over here is 2. You've got a power of 2, two solutions. Here's my second example. Now, first thing, how do I know that it is quadratic? Because I see an x squared. So I know that it is quadratic. It's not linear. It's quadratic. It's going to give me two solutions, two answers. So x equals something or x equals something. So our steps get into standard form. Make it equal to zero. Ah, great. It's already equal to zero. Fantastic. And descending powers of x. So x squared, then x to the power of one, and then the term with no x. So it's already in standard form for me. Fantastic. Then I need to factorize. Again, taking us back to the very important concept of factorizing. What type of factorizing would you use over here? I've got three terms. But remember, always try highest common factor first. It's the most important type. I cannot take out a highest common factor here. I can't do difference of two squares like in the previous example because I have three terms and difference of two squares needs two terms. So I've got three terms. So this is a trinomial. So if you are unfamiliar with how to factorize a trinomial or you feel like you need practice on that, again, linked in the description box below will be my factorizing playlist. But to factorize this trinomial very quickly, 14 is 2 times 7 or 1 times 14. I'm trying to make a negative 5. So I'm going to choose the 2 and the 7. It's going to be x minus 7 and x plus 2. The reason why? Negative 7 and a positive 2 gets me my negative 5. That's where the negative 5 comes from. And if I multiply them together, you get a negative 14, which is where that comes from. Fantastic. So now that I've factorized it, I've got two brackets there and there. We're going to take each piece, each little bracket, and make it equal to zero. So you're going to say x minus 7 is equal to zero, or put a big or in the middle, x plus 2 is equal to zero. So here, inverse operation, opposite of subtracting 7 is adding 7. So 0 plus 7 is 7. Here, inverse operation of plus 2, opposite of plus 2 is minus 2. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Again, 
two answers. They both need to be there in order for you to get the marks. The or doesn't mean that you can choose which answer to give. You must give both answers. Both of these answers will make this equation over here true. In part two, we'll carry on with example three, four, and five. I'll see you in the very next video. Remember to check the links in the description box for more resources.